I gotta say, this fluorizing screen looks pretty sick. With the click of a button, you get this massive screen coming out of nowhere, which feels kind of futuristic, I think. Or with a push of a button, we could uh, watch a football game. Or a movie shown in full color on our big 3D television screen. But maybe I'm just getting old. Anyway. What's producing this image is called an Ultra Short Throw Laser Projector, or Laser TV as some people call it. And yeah, I don't know about you, but my For You page is cluttered with videos about these things. So I have to say, people are pretty hyped about these projectors. And that's because USD projectors can produce these massive images of like 100 inch or even 150 inch diagonals, just like an ordinary projector can. But supposedly these USD projectors don't have a lot of the drawbacks that conventional projectors have, especially when it comes to using these in a normal room. You know, with white walls, windows and lights and stuff. Like if you've ever seen a normal projector outside of a home theater setup, you know how miserable these look when any light hits the screen. You really gotta have a dedicated room, paint the walls black and whatnot to get a good looking image out of a standard or long throw projector. This one though, I can put in my normal room with all white walls and ceiling and even have some lights on and still get a good looking image. So why is that and how good is it really? Like, could you use a USD projector like this during the day as an actual TV replacement? Well, a USD projector on its own really doesn't look that different from a normal projector. The big advantage comes from how a USD projector can work together with the screen. The screen is specifically made for USD projectors and actually is a lot more high tech than it looks like at first glance. This is not just a great piece of fabric, there's a lot more to it. Right now, I have all my studio lights on and these are pretty bright and only thanks to how the projector can interact with the screen, the image still looks kind of usable. Yeah, sure, it's a bit washed out, but under these conditions, even a usable image is quite the achievement. Like, watch what happens when I close the screen. It just looks miserable in comparison. Yeah, that's not looking great. The thing is, the brightness of the projection surface determines how dark the black level of the image can be. This projector cannot project black light onto my white wall. That's not how physics work. You can only make the surface brighter than it already is. So I have to make my room as dark as possible so that the white wall can produce even a half decent black level. It's still not looking great to be honest, even though my room is completely blacked out right now. And that's mostly because of the reflections from my white walls and ceiling. The projector pumps quite a bit of light into the room, which then bounces back, and that's washing out the image. So what's the screen doing to prevent that? Well, if you get really close, you can see that it has this special structure. It looks like little triangles, and that's actually pretty clever. See, the USD projector sits just below the screen, so the light hits the screen from the bottom at an angle. So all the light from the projector only means the underside of this triangle structure, which is covered with a reflective layer. The top though is covered with an absorption layer, so your ceiling lights, ceiling reflections and a good chunk of the light that doesn't come from directly below the screen are getting absorbed. If you look at the screen from above, you can see how dark it becomes, while the projector actually sees a rather bright and reflective surface. So this is something you can only really pull off with a USD projector that sits just below the screen. Now, this is pretty effective and I've seen people using their USD projectors in a well-lit room during the day, basically like a full TV replacement. And yeah, thanks to these ALR screens, you can actually see an image during the day with these projectors, so it's possible to use them instead of a TV, I guess. But man, I have to say, as a full TV replacement, this is really not cutting it. In a brightly lit room, the contrast and brightness of a USD projector don't even come close to just an entry-level TV. And I can comfortably say this, because the projector I'm using here is the AWOL 3500 Pro, which is one of the brightest consumer USD projectors that's currently on the market. And I'm already using it at full power right now with an ALR screen, so it really doesn't get much better than this. The beauty of this setup is not that you can use it with daylight blasting through your windows. I mean, you could if you're really in a pinch, but what really makes it special is that you don't need a blacked out home theater to get a good looking image with these projectors. You can put it in your living room and you don't even have to close all the window blinds and turn off every single light source before you can enjoy a movie. Even with a bit of ambient light, 
the contrast and brightness still are great. If it's after sunset, some sheer curtains really are enough to get a good looking image. Of course, the darker it gets, the better the contrast ratio becomes, so closing some window blinds is a good idea, but you don't need to have a dedicated, fully blacked out home theater for the setup. So I've been using the setup in my living room and office, and man, this huge screen really is something else. I mean, I'm kind of spoiled when it comes to image quality, as both my current main monitor and my TV are OLEDs, but a 100 inch screen like this just makes for a whole different viewing experience. Obviously, the contrast can't keep up with OLED, but I honestly don't mind the higher black level as much as I thought I would. With this projector and screen combination, I measured a contrast ratio of about 1000 to 1500 to 1, depending on the white point and mode. So it's somewhere in the range of an IPS panel, technically, but subjectively it looks better than that. Probably because this is a front projection rather than a panel that's being back illuminated. What's completely out of this world though is the color saturation this thing is able to put out. This is a triple laser projector and these lasers can render insanely saturated colors. I measured over 106% of the REC 2020 color space. For some perspective, that's almost one and a half times the color space you get from WOLED. My camera really can't do this justice, but these are the most saturated colors I've ever seen. <laughs> Very impressive. So yeah, the colors and the sheer size of the image really make up for the not so great contrast for me. The black level is nowhere close to OLED, but I still prefer the UHD projector setup for watching movies. It's just a whole different experience than watching something on a 55 inch TV. Gaming is an experience as well. Sitting close to this huge screen makes it feel like you're actually in the game. Sounds a bit corny, I know, but it's actually crazy how immersive the setup really is. But yeah, for good gaming experience, you also need decent motion clarity and low input lag. And I have to say, I really don't know what to expect from a projector in terms of response times, latency, motion clarity, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, this thing is actually pretty capable. I even tried some Valorant, which really is not what the setup is meant to be used for, but it's actually not terrible, which I guess is a big compliment for a projector. With the right settings, the lag is okay at 13.4 milliseconds. 120 Hz and the low delay mode really help a lot here. But in order to achieve 120 Hz, the projector has to drop the resolution from 4K to 1080p. But the gain in responsiveness and motion clarity is totally worth it in my opinion. But this is where it gets a bit tricky. See, 120 Hz are decent for gaming, the lag is okay too. But whenever I make fast movements in game, it really becomes clear that projectors are fundamentally different from TVs or monitors on a technical level. See, due to how these laser projectors work, things that move across the screen fast can look a bit messy sometimes. If you look closely, you can actually see that it renders the red parts of the image first, then green and then blue. This usually happens fast enough that it looks like white to the eye. But when things move across the screen fast, they tend to leave this rainbow-like trail behind. To the eye, it's not as offensive as you might think, but this rainbow trail is definitely visible when you're looking for it. What's pretty interesting though, the motion clarity of this laser projector is actually surprisingly good. It looks kind of similar to what you get with backlight strobing or black frame insertion on an LCD or OLED panel. If you compare it to OLED at the same refresh rate, the motion on the laser projector even looks sharper. Also a lot more messy, sure, but sharper still. A laser projector definitely makes for an interesting gaming experience, but personally I'm gonna stick to gaming monitors. This setup is really all about watching movies or a good show on a massive screen. There's just no replacement for a large screen when it comes to watching movies. A smaller screen just doesn't give you the same cinema feeling as a large screen does, it's, it's just different. However, projectors aren't the only way to get a large screen. There are lots of TVs in the 100 inch range and these really aren't that expensive anymore, unless you want OLED of course. Large OLEDs are just insanely expensive still. But yeah, ignoring OLED, you're probably not saving any money by going with a 100 inch USD projector setup instead of a TV. My setup is actually more expensive than a lot of these 100 inch TVs. These USD projectors really start to make sense though when we're talking about 110 to 120 inch or even larger screens. TV prices just go nuts at these diagonals, which makes a 120 inch USD setup seem like a pretty sensible option, honestly. And yeah, these retractable screens are also pretty cool. Can't really do that with a TV, can ya? Anyway, thanks for watching. Bis zum nächsten Video.